Here is a image that is going to describe normal development. Here we see the yolk sac. The yolk sac is going to be important for exchanging nutrients between the fetus and the mother. Here we see the yolk sac getting narrower, weeks three and four. And then week five, the yolk sac is going to be contained within the umbilical cord. The yolk sac is also going to contribute to the formation of the umbilical cord. If we were to take a lateral view of this image, we would see this picture. And here is the yolk sac. And we see that it is going to connect to the gut tube. The gut tube is going to give rise to the foregut, midgut, and the hindgut. The narrowing of the yolk sac is called the Weiland duct. This is also known as the amphomesenteric duct. The midgut is going to connect to the yolk sac over here through the metallic duct or the amphomesenteric duct. The midgut during week five is going to protrude to the umbilical cord and then it is going to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then week 10, it is going to go back into the abdominal cavity. And then it is going to rotate 180 degrees counterclockwise to give rise to the mature intestine. This image is going to show us what is going to happen exactly. Here we see the superior mesenteric artery, which supplies the midgut. So the midgut protrudes to the umbilical cord which we see over here and then there is going to be a 90 degree rotation counterclockwise after that during week 10 the midgut is going to go back into the abdominal cavity and then it is going to rotate 180 degrees to give the final orientation of our intestines the purple color is the large intestine and the blue color is the small intestine. So here we see the large intestine being on top in the final orientation. Now the foregut, hindgut and the Let's say the mid gut in the middle and the four uh, in the hind gut. So the our gut tube is going to give rise to the foregut, mid gut, and the hind gut. The foregut is going to be the region from the esophagus to the proximal from the esophagus to the upper duodenum. The foregut is going to be spied by the celiac trunk. Coming off the celiac trunk is the splenic artery that is going to spy the spleen the venous drainage of the spleen is through the splenic vein, which uses the portal circulation, not the caval circulation. The midgut is going to be from the lower duodenum all the way to the two thirds of the transverse colon. 
So the midcut is also going to contain the ascending column. The midcut is going to be supplied by the superior mesenteric artery. The hindgut is going to be from the distal one third of the transverse colon. Then it is going to extend all the way to the anal canal above the pectinate line. It is going to be spied by the inferior mesenteric artery. Here is an image that is going to show us the foregut. So everything above is going to be contained within the foregut. And then the celiac trunk is going to be the main blood supply. Here we see the splenic artery, which is a branch of the celiac trunk that is going to spy the spleen. Here we see the midgut. The midgut is going to be supplied by the superior mesenteric artery. And here we see the superior mesenteric artery. We see the ascending colon over here, the transverse colon, the two thirds, the proximal two thirds of the transverse colon, as well as the lower duodenum. And the hindgut is going to contain the anal canal above the pectinate line, which is over here, as well as the distal one third of the transverse colon, the descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. And it is going to be supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery over here.